Good evening, my name is Trey Oliver and I'm the featured artist on the first floor here at the Marks Library on the uh, campus of the University of South Alabama. I'm a uh, amateur recreational artist by night and during the, the day I'm the warden at Mobile County Metro Jail. Uh, the first piece that we'll be looking at today is an uh, oleander or a South Sea, South sea Rose. Um, didn't, that's not really uh, accurate for what an oleander looks like so I just sort of popped it out of my head and I uh, did a little googling and found out that it looked close to an oleander and I named it that and no one knows the difference. <laughs> this is um, a, a painting my original piece like this about three or four years ago when Airbus first announced that they were coming to Mobile and it was a, a very oblong painting and it was entitled Final Approach for Mobtown and uh, someone from Airbus actually bought that and so this was actually painted over of a, a painted over print of that same piece. Uh, this here, you, we've all heard that a word, that a photograph is worth a thousand words. Well, this is exactly 1,000 paint brushes, or, or I'm sorry, paint strokes from a, from a brush. And it, it reminds you of Indian war beads, uh, or it could be a pattern on, on a dress just uh, zoomed in on. And uh, this here, uh, adamant is, is a word I like to use a lot, and um, I broke it down to the a damn ant, which means unyielding, unshakable, and unwavering. Uh, this is actually painted on a 1930 piece, 1930-ish piece of wood in, in frame. Uh, this 1930 is 1930 piece of wood. Where'd you get the wood? I got the wood from an antique store. It had an old painting uh, on it, but I just went went over that. Uh, this here, I'll, I'll let you, your imagination fill in the blanks. Uh, politics makes stri uh, strange bedfellows, so I entitled this Strange Diplomatic Channels because we all know that things are, are not always as they seem, that um, even since the days of Cleopatra, uh, large deals are made behind the scenes. That's what they are, that is supposed to represent. I love old cars. I used to have a, a 1976 Cadillac uh, Eldorado convertible, and um, I saw a similar photograph like this in a, in a magazine and just wanted to, to paint that, that sleek tail fan. In fact, I had this car when my daughter started college and I broke one of the tail lights and it was $250. I got rid of the car the next week. I said, I can't afford to keep this car and, and with Kelly going to school. And this uh, painting down here is a celebration of uh, the 1928 women's right to vote. Uh, here we have a, a woman and a uh, souped up convertible jalopy, uh, smoking a cigarette, things that women weren't supposed to do in public back then. And uh, the tag is personalized Lulu, and that is uh, whose house that it will hang in after this art show. I, I love uh, uh, history, I love Mobile Bay, I love Old Mobile Bay, and I found out that someone actually had uh, Bay Life copyrighted, so I added and then I found out someone had Mobile Bay Life copyrighted, so then I found out no one had Old Mobile Bay Life. So this is um, an Old Mobile photograph from o Mobile Bay, and it's, it's a female sailor. That's my fourth one to paint like that. Uh, they go pretty fast. They're real well, popular. Well, what is the female sailor? Just a figment of my imagination. Just a, yeah. and, and of course, this is what it is, uh, a Southern Bell, not a couch potato. It's a very popular piece. Uh, and this is the male version of my uh, old mobile for Bay Life, a, a man during a, on, during a storm. My, my youngest son Chase and I have been caught in a storm or two out of Mobile Bay and this makes me think of, of those adventures. Now uh, Chase, when you look at this, what do you see? What's the first thing that pops in your mind? A knight on a horse. A knight on a horse, exactly. And when you say a knight on a horse, what gender do you usually think about? A male. A male knight, right? Well, at first glance, you might think that's a male knight, but then what might change your mind as upon further review? Oh, the seal. <laughs> yeah, the, the gender seal on, on the uh, shield, and of course, I, the rose could, could go either way, I suppose. And then I entitled it, Artist by Night, Night by Day. And when you think about women artists, and I think predominantly uh, women saturate the, uh, the art field, uh, women, uh, typically paint their, their art at night and then during the day they're working their day jobs and raising their families and managing their husbands and so forth. So I just felt like that, uh, and, and that's what I like about inspiration in art, is don't always go in the direction that's the most obvious. 
I'll, in other words, if it seems like I should go this way, I'll go the, the opposite just on purpose to get people's attention. I didn't realize those were paintbrushes. I passed by that. Yeah, yeah, that's yeah. Those are all paintbrushes. That's and her clippers and all that. And back are all paintbrushes. Exactly. Yeah, and and um, you know, there's a song that goes, "The canvas can do miracles." I, my original plan was to leave this shield blank because a blank canvas is what shields people like me from whatever we're trying to forget about while while we're painting. But I went ahead and opted for the. Uh, I wanted it to be obvious that that was a, a female artist. But yeah, I'm, I'm glad. I just thought everyone saw that. But yeah, those are paintbrushes of, of different uh, various designs that are very common. And this is the first painting I've ever painted. And it's not for sale. It, it's going to go to my youngest son. I'm going to get it framed for him. That's the old Dog River Bridge that I can remember when I was a, a rookie police officer. In the 80s, I've had some, some interesting times on and around that bridge, and I used to sail with my grandfather in the 70s. He was one of the original members of the Buccaneer Yacht Club, and we would sail out of Mobile Yacht Club sometimes and have to wait for the bridge to open up to go through it. And my instructor at that time was, was Devlin Wilson, and I, so I, I can't sell that because that's my, that's my first painting. Um, the BP oil spill was a, a very depressing, discouraging time on Mobile Bay. I was living on the bay during the oil spill. And I can remember each morning I would wake up and, and see the boats of opportunity with those flags flying going out to uh, assess the damage and to clean up. And I got to thinking, you know, how are the dolphins gonna hold up? How are the pelicans gonna hold up? Well, Mother Nature is pretty robust, pretty resilient, everything. You know, I mean, there were some fatalities of, of animals and birds, but for the most part, they, they fared okay. But I thought about, well, what if mermaids were out there? How would a, a mermaid have survived it? So this is a, a, a floundering mermaid, maybe on her last breath, dying on the bottom of the bay. Not a happy painting necessarily, but still. And uh, this right here, whenever I would take art lessons from um, Devlin, and I'd say, so what do you think, Professor? Is it finished? Because he would always say that I was too, uh, too tight, too, too anal, and he said, you need to loosen up, and it takes it took a while for me to, to, to loosen up, but he would always say, loosen up, and then whenever he was thinking that it was done, he'd say, sign it, sign it, so that was his motto, sign it, so I create it, I sign it, and I own it, you know, you, we, we should assume responsibility for, for things, both good and bad, and so that's just a little something I painted thinking about one of my art instructors. Uh, this is a uh, lyric from one of my uh, favorite songs of Sticks, and it's a, it's a salute to the, the band Sticks, uh, Come Sail Away With Me, again, Mobile Bay. Uh, this is uh, something that is not really necessarily a happy painting. Can someone look at that and tell me what it represents, what it memorializes? The Dolphin Island Race, that when s six sailors where recreational, recreational sailors were killed in the Dolphin Island race. Same year that we lost a, a Blue Angel, and same year that uh, the year later when we had the uh, BP oil explosion. So this is called Gulf Coast Trilogy of Death. Three incidents, uh, deadly incidents on the uh, on the Gulf Coast. I'm sort of a Renaissance fan. I, I love the Renaissance. I love medieval times. I I love. Uh, I love old buildings and history, and, and um, I think I was taken under Bill Morris when I painted these two nights, and I was taken under Devin Wilson when I painted the Coliseum back in the, you know, the 1200s. It's real, the story of the Coliseum was really interesting. When you look at the history, how long it took to make, how expensive it was, why it was built and everything, and I always try to do a little historical research in, in my, my pieces. And of course, these represent Knights Templar. Why the Coliseum? It's immediately recognizable. I mean, it's like the original Superdome, you know? I mean, I just, I'm just fascinated by it and would one day love to see it. For those of you that haven't, you know, it's, it, was, it could be closed off and filled with water and they would have mock uh, battle scenes on it. So it's really remarkable it's a feat of engineering. And I didn't find out just until recently what this was. Uh, it was a chair, obviously, at one point, and it's called a, a ship chair, according to Paula Webb, local author and librarian. And she says that these, these chairs 
would uh, be used on the side of a ship where it was very narrow uh, walkways and they would fold up easily to get out of the way of the catwalk. And I, uh, this one is not for sale because it's currently, it's some, it belongs to someone and it's hanging up in their house when it's not here. Uh, and that just represents the, the yellow roses, uh, friendship and the red roses, uh, romantic feelings. And that's just a pattern that just sort of came into my mind. Uh, this is a celebration of the uh, 80th anniversary of Gone with the Wind. Uh, I'm a proud Southern son, but we also have to have to face reality and the truth. And and uh, when people first see Confederate character, they said, "What do you mean by that?" And I said, "Well, it's, it wasn't perfect. It's cracked. It was flawed." Uh, but we can't remember that the war dead was over 600,000 people during this uh, these four and a half, almost five years. And then we had honor, although it was misguided honor to some degree. So here's a Southern Belle, um, and she's got her bird on a leash. And um, so you can sort of read some, some meaning in, into it from that standpoint. But that's the 80th anniversary of going when. This is one of my favorite pieces here. Uh, these are random, but not pointless, strokes of brush, not strokes of luck. And it's a mixed media, it's made from driftwood. Anytime you see some other uh, optics on these canvases, it's, it's driftwood that I, that I have found on the shores of Mobile Bay or Bon Secure Bay. And uh, but I love the fact that you know, we got some barnacles here and this gnarly looking piece of uh, Mother Nature art that, that I didn't touch. I, I like finding driftwood and making art from it without uh, changing its shape or form. Uh, this is some antique tile that I found, as I mentioned, upstairs uh, by Murphy High School in the 30s and 40s. I started just putting it on this, this uh, piece of wood here, and I entitled it Life in Dixie, or it's entitled Dixie Mosaic, and the uh, theme is Life in Dixie is a puzzling mosaic. When you look uh, at the history of Mobile, uh, we were we're older than New Orleans, and we are we were a cultural melting pot within just our first 100 years. We had Indians, we had Europeans, Spanish and French and British, we had Americans, we had mulattoes, we had uh, Creoles. So we were already a melting pot before New Orleans was, was even formed, actually. So, and it, it's puzzling our mosaic, our different heritages and cultures and so forth. And, and that's just the way life is. I've always been fascinated by uh, playing cards. And I looked at the history of playing cards and, and found out how they came about and, and how they've been around for hundreds and hundreds of years. And so I started creating my own characters. I, I guarantee you, you won't find any uh, playing card characters that look anything like this bunch here. Except maybe for, for that one, you might find a, a couple that are similar to uh, the Jolly Joker, which that reminds me a little bit of Mardi Gras. And all these uh, characters are cutting their eyes at each other because no one trusts anybody. And there's, we've got some unique made up suits here, not your typical spades or clubs, which the original set of playing cards didn't have any of the uh, suits that we have today. And this is the eye of the Illuminati and it never blinks. Um, there's something about the eyeball that's um, captivating to me. Uh, people say that you can look at someone's eyes and tell a lot of, about them. Mm -hmm. I was, uh, it was fascinating to me when I found out that uh, Van Gogh was impressed by Japanese art. And, and, and Chinese art is really remarkable as, as well. And the Chinese are great culture, great people. And so this is just sort of a tribute to, to ancient China. It's, a, it's an amazing country, so I did that piece to, uh, to honor them. Art Deco is another favorite art period that I like. Uh, again, this is made from oak tile from um, the 30s and 40s that was found buried in the ground. I, I, like, to, I like to take things that, that come from the ground and, and make with it. This is probably one of my favorite pieces because it's about my, my favorite person. Um, Van Gogh certainly suffered a lot in his life, but he he did so much in such a short period of time. His art career was less than ten years, and he's 
He's touched millions of people still to this day. And I love this quote. If you hear a voice within you say you cannot paint, then by all means paint and that voice will be silenced. Uh, he died at age 37. Uh, he toyed and actually was a, a minister for a while. He couldn't decide between God or art at, for a number of years in his life. Uh, Absin is a, uh, was a drink back in, in that day in, in that part of the world that um, had some uh, pretty profound effects on people. People would hallucinate if they became intoxicated on, on Absin. And, um, and, and he was no exception. And we all know that he sometimes would eat his own paint. Some people would theorize maybe to kill himself. He wrote about 600 letters to his brother Theo. And it was Theo's wife that actually started selling uh, Van Gogh's paints after Van Gogh died. I think Van Gogh only sold one or two paintings in his lifetime. His brother was his uh, patron saint, his art patron that supported his lifestyle while, while he was off traveling. It's funny, I think if we were to see Van Gogh today, we would not pick him up and give him a ride because he would look homeless. He probably did not, we know for a fact he didn't practice good hygiene, but he was, he was a brilliant artist. And then this is a, a memorial to um, the Green Fairy. Uh, it was said to, to provoke illicit behavior in a bottle. That was his nickname. And this is a mixed media pieces of driftwood that I, I found on Mobile Bay. And these are two pieces of driftwood I found. I, I've made about, this is about the, my 12th or 13th cross that I've made. I've sewed all the, the rest of them. Sometimes you'll find wood, and I, I'm sure there's a few pieces here where beavers have chewed on it at some point during its journey down the river and then up through the bay. And then again, this is actually, okay, this is not Murphy tile, this is tile that I found in Mobile Bay. You can see the barnacles and the wood. My granddaughter's actually helped me find some of that tile. Mm -hmm. Ooh, it's sort of like a treasure hunt. And this, this piece here is mixed media, the driftwood. And I couldn't decide what to, I literally had four different titles on this. I'm real bad about it, I'll paint it. I'm not quite happy with it, I'll paint over it again. Not quite happy with it, paint over again. I started this, I can't tell you how much time I got this piece, but holding back the years is what I kept wanting to uh, to say. So that's that's what that piece is. And I get a lot of compliments, especially from younger people on that. This piece here is also not for sale. Uh, that, this is uh, an early piece I did it back in 14. And those are my, my three granddaughters sitting on the uh, panther there at Murphy High School which is where my, my dad went to school when he was a kid. Uh, this piece here is pretty self-explanatory. Welcome home. Um, I don't know if that's the wife welcoming the husband, the husband welcoming the wife, but they've dropped their car keys. She's coming out of her shoe, so that's sort of a neat message there. And here's a, another version of my final, final approach for Mob Town. This is three in a series. And behind me, I, I sold that original painting just soon after I painted it, it's just uh, it's a butterfly, and that's a uh, painted over print. It's a little different version, and so people not sure if this is a geisha girl or or a, a wise Chinese woman. So I said she's a wise geisha woman. Uh, dancing aroma. Uh, sometimes, um, if you ever notice when you're drinking coffee, how the uh, the steam will come off the top. It's, if it's windy, it will swirl. And what I imagined was uh, a man and woman having a cup of coffee and, and their uh, aromas are, are having a dance, dancing aroma from the coffee, their morning coffee. I mean, that's a, just a wine and cheese uh, dining room piece. Uh, this here has, has gone through several transitions. I finally wound up with this. This is also not for sale. It's, it, it's in someone's home. And it has the vintage tile found from Murphy High School. You got a vintage RC column. Uh, you have to be probably at least 50 something years old to recognize that, if not older. And then, of course, a uh, moon pile over Mob Town. Uh, I think the first moon pile over Mob Town was in 2009, if I'm not badly mistaken. <laughs> and this is a, uh, I love the Egyptian culture. I love hieroglyphics. And this is just sort of my version of, um, of Ra, which is the, uh, the ancient Egyptian sun god. And I'm, I've got some more pieces that I'm doing uh, with hieroglyphics. I, and I'm not a big fan of, of clowns, but I, I use the term 
uh, former ro rodeo clown. And I, I've just recently noticed that a lot of people are petrified of clowns. So, and that's a little bit of a creepy kind of clown. So um, I, I gave him the, the job of spreading good cheer and, and not trying to scare anyone. I'm really proud of this here. Uh, Tic-tac-toe is another ancient game. It's about, it goes way back to ancient China. Uh, I, I didn't know that. But instead of X's and O's, I've got uh, the floor leaves and colorful roosters. Uh, again, revisiting the Art Deco period. Uh, this is a, an Art Deco dancer. And, and this piece here is, is uh, some people read it and they're not quite sure what to think about it. It says, cancer sucks. I have chemo brain. What is your excuse? I, I've, got, I've had some friends that suffer from chemo brain and my heart goes out to them. And, uh, but I also have some other friends that don't have chemo brain, but they say some really stupid things and do some stupid things sometimes. So, so this is sort of in their honor, and it's a, it's, it's a juxtaposition to a, a peaceful uh, water scene with beautiful flowers growing. And this piece here was just sold today, as a matter of fact. It says Westbound Mom Town, and it's a, it's a painting of a of a uh, 70 ish pickup truck heading to the Bankhead Tunnel. I love the Bankhead Tunnel. Um, a lot of memories there as a kid driving through it. Uh, back way before there was cameras, there were police officers that would, would sit in the uh, tunnel and with uh, with guns and hats and badges on it. They, they watched to make sure nothing happened in the tunnel. This piece here is really out there. I, I could ask you what you thought it would be. Uh, Chase, I'll ask you, what do you think that might be? Okay, good. Yeah, that's good. Kelly? Um, a net. Like soccer net. Yeah. Yeah. The, the name of it is net neutrality. And, you know, that's, that's an ongoing political debate right now. Who's going to control the net? Uh, religious uh, entities are, are having some issues with that. So that was sort of where I was thinking when I painted that. And I believe that is it. Uh, thank you so much for... for uh, watching uh, local art here at the um, Marks Library in the Rotting Gallery. I come down to the first floor and uh, take a look at anything that you might would be interested in. And the good news is all full-time students will get a 20% off the mark price on any of this art. Thank you so much for watching.